So let me uh, run that program. It's called essential.m. So essential. So there's the two sets of points. And here is the essential matrix that it calculated. Um, just like before, I'd like to just verify that these um, epipolar lines make sense. Um, re recall from our discussion of stereo that um, we can draw epipolar lines. We can represent them using this form, AX plus BY plus C equals zero. And if we do that, then a point lies on line L only if P transpose L equals zero. So we can... Uh, apply multiply e times p1 to calculate the epipolar line in the other view or e transpose times p0 to get the epipolar line uh, in the second image so let me just run draw epipolar this program inputs the images the essential matrix that we calculated earlier and the set of corresponding points and it draws the epipolar lines Let's see. So let me just expand this a bit. Here's the two sets of points. And when I hit return here, it will in turn draw each of the epipolar lines and the corresponding point in the other image. So we can see the, the points lie on the line that they're supposed to, so uh, we don't have any outliers in this case. Well, they're synthetic images, so we wouldn't. Okay, now this this uh, next section's uh, a bit advanced mathematics. It's how to recover the translation and rotation given that we've calculated the essential matrix E. So recall that the essential matrix was made up of the translation and rotation in this form. So we can extract the translation and rotation by again taking the SVD of E. Here D should be that um, diagonal matrix of 1, 1, and 0 along the diagonal. So then we form the following combination. So the translation is the third column of U, but it's either um, that column or it's negative. R we form from this, this matrix W and the uh, matrix V from the decomposition. But there are also two, two combinations of that. So we actually have four possible solutions for translation and rotation. Uh, two for translation, two for rotation. But three of these are nonsensical, meaning that they represent situations where the points are behind one or both of the cameras. So we want the only solution that corresponds to the case where the points are in front of the cameras. So to find that, we construct a scene point. We can reconstruct the scene point via triangulation and see if it is in front of both cameras. If it is, then that combination of translation and rotation is correct. And remember that our, our all of results here are only true up to a scale factor. So the translation has an arbitrary magnitude we really only know the direction of the translation, although the rotation matrix R is correct. The points are also scaled by the same unknown scale factor that the translation is scaled by. Okay, so let's look at how to uh, do this. Well, first of all, this is the code that determines the four combinations of translation and rotation. Um, here we've taken the SVD of E. Uh, here is the rotation uh, the translation combinations of U or negative U, and here are the rotation matrices. This part just ensures that the rotation matrices are right-handed, namely that the determinant is a positive one and not a negative one. If it's not, then we, we have to take the negative of the result. So if I run that, I get um, these possible poses for extracted from the essential matrix. Um, just looking at what the true pose was, we can see that the first one matches that. So the rotation matches exactly, and the translation matches except for a scale factor of about 0.3 or something like that. 
So let's look at how to reconstruct a point. Um, so we see a point, we're going to reconstruct by triangulation. We see a point P in two views uh, from P1 and P2. And we want to find the 3D point that lies as close as possible to the intersection of those two rays. So the projection of P onto the left image is given by multiplying M1 times P. And on the right image is M2 times P, where M1 is just this 3 by 4 matrix that extracts the, um, the uh, top three elements of P. And M2 is a 3 by 4 matrix that encodes the rotation and translation of uh, view 2 with respect to view 1. So since P1 and MP1 are parallel, so this, remember, this is the observed point, this is the projected point. So ideally, those are parallel, so their cross product should be 0. And similarly for P2 and M2, P2. So the point P, this unknown that we're trying to find, should satisfy these two equations. So we want to solve for P um, using least squares. So the way we do this is we represent the cross product as um, a product of these uh, equivalent skew symmetric matrices. So now this is a matrix called A, let's call it again, multiplied by P, and that's equal to 0. So we form A by taking the uh, skew symmetric matrix corresponding to P1. Here's the skew symmetric matrix corresponding to P2. We multiply those times M1 and M2. And then we solve for x using that familiar um, process of taking the <coughs> um, smallest singular value of the SVD of A. So the way we check these combinations then is we take a any pair of points. We check for all possible, all four of our combinations uh, of poses, and we reconstruct that point with respect to the two cameras, uh, P1 and P2. And we check to see if the Z components of those two points are both greater than zero, namely they're in front of the two cameras. So that's done here. Um, this part reconstructs the point with respect to P1, and this uh, with respect to camera 1, and this reconstructs it with respect to camera 2. This checks to see if the z value of point of the two points are greater than zero in the two cameras. If it is, then we have our answer and we can break out of this loop here. So I'll run this example called two view. This does all that uh, that I just mentioned. Um, inputs a pair of images, essential matrix, calculates the pose and figures out which one of those is correct. So those are the points, and here are the, um, the four possibilities, and here is the one that it finally calculated here. So we look at these, and we can see that, yes, this, is the, this does match the true pose that we knew from before. The rotation matches almost exactly, and the translation matches except for that unknown scale factor. Um, almost done here. Let's just reconstruct the rest of the points now that we know the true pose between the two views. So we just do the uh, triangulation for every one of the corresponding pairs, uh, solving the matrix equation A P equals zero. So this code um, does that. It uh, goes through all the points in P1, does the triangulation to find the location in um, of the 3D point with respect to camera one. And here we're going to plot it. So let me just um, grab this code and I'll append it to that program I just ran. So at the very bottom here, I'm going to add this code and then just run this. Okay, so those are my points, 
here's my pose and here are the reconstructed points and if I rotate this in 3d you can see that the points do indeed appear to lie on the face of a cube like that.